Good evening, Naomi. Good it evening. is a pleasure to have you here tonight. This is a great honor for us in the Jerusalem Conference, New York. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about Regavim. What do you do? Regavim was founded 18 years ago by three young idealists who came from very different directions to the same conclusion that the question of land use policy is the most basic, the most basic expression of national sovereignty and of the Zionist vision. Who uses your most basic resource, the land itself? What are they using it for? And what are the implications uh, for the future of the state of Israel? So we begin with the ground. We uh, divide the country into regions and see what's actually happening on the ground throughout the land of Israel. We take that information back, take a, a big picture snapshot of it to understand the reality on the ground and to, to uh, try to propose policy or legislation um, through a variety of means to bring the Zionist vision to, into, back into Israeli policy. Amazing. And tell me, what is the big picture analysis of the possibility of peace with the Palestinian Authority? So uh, this is an area that was, um, we've applied our traditional Regavim methods, and that is really to let the facts speak. Uh, it's something unusual, that, uh, an area that we were not involved in before October 7th, but we simply did what we do down on the ground, uh, collecting facts and letting those facts uh, show us the big picture. And the big picture is a very frightening one. I think we have some slides that we can show you, maybe? Yes. So, we came to the conclusion, uh, which is not a very surprising one, I don't think, to anyone in this room, that the paradigms that controlled Israel's policy up until the 7th of October have come crashing down, and it is time for a new paradigm. Um, but we're not moving. <laughs> it's not moving. Okay, if we can advance the slides. What we did was uh, simply do what anyone could do if they wanted to, and that is collect the facts, let those facts speak. We began to analyze what the Palestinian Authority actually says, what they do, and how they express uh, their attitudes towards the state of Israel, towards the possibility for peace, to see if we have a peace partner uh, on the other side of this question. Uh, the background is, uh, in, in a nutshell, the Palestinian Authority and the Palestinian police force were created under the Oslo Accords, essentially Israel subcontracted its security, um, allowing the Palestinian Authority to take control of various territories. Uh, we've seen how that's played out, but at the same time, it had some very basic responsibilities to which they have never lived up, not to this day. Only three main things, really. One was uh, changing the, the Palestinian National Charter uh, to remove all uh, reference to the annihilation of the State of Israel. The second was to stop incitement in curricula and uh, in the public sphere. And the third was to cooperate with Israel to combat terrorism. And that has never happened. So, uh, we can go to the next one. Yes, even though between the first and second Oslo Accords, dozens of Israelis were murdered by terrorists, uh, the Palestinian Authority never lived up to the three main uh, requirements of the, uh, of the first Oslo Agreement. The second Oslo Agreement went ahead and repeated the exact same paradigm again. Next slide. Um, the Palestinian Authority has never prevented the rise of terrorism. It has always encouraged terrorism. And what we have uh, collected in recent months is irrefutable statements by the Palestinian Authority leadership itself that they don't intend to stop doing so. They not only support terrorism, uh, glorify terrorism, pay terrorists, pay for people to murder Jews on a sliding scale 
um, as we all know, the Taylor Force Act and Pay for Slave program, but it gets even worse than that. Uh, and as w what we began to see was not only these patterns of support for terrorism, but actual involvement, and this is again not new, this happened, started all the way back in 1996, the first serious wave of Palestinian Authority terrorism against Israeli soldiers and civilians, and it has continued ever since. And what we did was collect only for the past several months, uh, but the, the history here is a very, very bad one. Uh, as you can see, started already in 1996 uh, and has continued to this very day. And I cannot advance the slide. Can we Next. please uh, yeah. change the slide? Okay. So we collected in this report, which is available on our website, uh, data statements, martyr proclamations by the Palestinian Authority leadership itself. Uh, there are some 50 paid, trained, and armed Palestinian uh, security force officers. I would stress that they are paid, trained, and armed by the government of the United States, among others. Um, who have been directly involved in acts of terrorism that have taken the lives of Israeli civilians and soldiers. Uh, and this continues every day. At least 50% of the known registered officers of Palestinian Authority security forces are actually active members of internationally sanctioned terrorist groups. The conclusions are that didn't work out very well. The conclusions are uh, shocking. Uh, we cannot fool ourselves any longer into thinking that we have a partner for peace. We cannot possibly entertain the idea that the Palestinian Authority is a legitimate uh, option for the day after the war and giving any more territory or power or arms to a, an organization that is sworn to your destruction is suicidal. In the words that are attributed to Albert Einstein, repeating the same action over and over and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. We must wake ourselves up from this insanity. Thank you okay, so thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much having you here. No, me, Avregavim. Thank you very October much. 7, we met Hamas's terrorists face to face. A deadly wake up call. Now, let's meet the Palestinian Authority's terrorists. The Palestinian Authority security forces were established by the Oslo Accords and are supported and trained by the US and European countries.